Hi, today we're going to be looking at the Daniel Smith Art Dot Cards. We're going to try out all 238 colours. I won't be trying every single one on screen, but I'll be doing a lot and then reporting back to you on what I've found out. I'm looking at uh, the Daniel Smith colours because I'm doing a course in September that will be using these colours. So if you'd like to see how they uh, work out, how they look like on paper, keep watching. Welcome back to my regular viewers and if you're a new viewer and like, would like to subscribe please click the little red square in the bottom right hand corner then click the grey bell and make sure your phone accepts YouTube notifications then you'll always get alerts from me. So today I'm looking at the Daniel Smith range of paints which have long been on my shopping list. I've used Windsor & Newton for about 25 years and now I would really like to try the Daniel Smith because they got a uh, Generally, they're appealing to me because of the quinacridone colours in them and the pyrol colours, which are slightly more vibrant in a lot of ways than Winsor & Newton. It's just a different family of colours. Also, I'm doing a, a new course called Fanning the Flames of Fall. It's for watercolour beginners, total novices, and it's going to be run on Teachable. So I'm writing that course at the moment. For, for my Teachable courses, I'm going to be using Daniel Smith colours only. So I've got the really tricky job of picking certain colours for my course in September. Actually, it's an absolute joy. And as you'll see when I go through this video, you'll see the colours that I'm using, trying out. And what a joy it is to, to find new colours. So keep watching and we'll see how Daniel Smith performs. I've just received my pack of the 238 Daniel Smith colours to try. They come as four sheets of A4 paper with the actual blob of paint with its name and details on the card. There's so many colours and it's really hard to see them online and to know what they really look like. So what you can do with these is just moisten the brush and I'll just zoom in and start wetting the paint. I'm just going to find the one I fancied, which is this quinacridone uh, coral, which I thought would be really nice. Where's it gone? Yeah, it is. Let's try quinacridone coral with a bit of water. Oh yes, that is luscious, isn't it? And you can just brush it out and make a sort of rectangle leaving enough room then to try out the next colour. That is a gorgeous colour. It's a sort of watermelon colour. Very hard to mix from whatever paints you've got on your palette. So um, this costs about £26 to try out the 238 colours. It's a worthwhile investment because obviously I'm working with colour all the time and watercolour all the time. And I've always wanted these. I've waited years and years to get them. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to be occupied now for the next... I don't know how long, trying out all these Daniel Smith colours. Well, I'm part way through the first card and I've got to tell you, I'm enjoying myself so much. These colours are absolutely fantastic and uh, seeing them come alive when you drop some water on them is amazing and it really shows you the character of the paints, if I can just show you this. They've got such beautiful richness and clarity and it's really helping me see which colours are which because I've been trying to select paints for this course and just doing it online looking on screen and although I've looked at other people's swatches like this there's nothing like actually using the paint in the real so it's a great idea that Daniel Smith have, have got to uh, let us have a go with the paints in this way so I'm going to just zoom in and I'll show you a few more of them come into life as I, as I wet them I've been rinsing my jug after each colour group, so when I did all the yellows I, rin I, I changed my jug of water and I'm making sure that every time I, let's just zoom in, every time I dip my brush in the water it's going to be clean. See it starts to just dissolve that paint. You do a few strokes and create this sort of little rectangle. 
and that's Mayan red which is rather gorgeous. The paints look so dark don't they when they dry but of course when they're activated it's a different ball game. This is Elizabeth Crimson, beautiful elegant ruby red. And then permanent Elizabeth Crimson. Each time I'm really giving my brush a good rinse and then picking up clear water because I want these colours to be as pure as pure can be because this is going to be my colour chart going forward you know for years. So that's nearly the end of that group there so I'm moving on now to a new jug of water. And this is my brush again, fresh water, new jug of water. Now this looks interesting, this Frodenite Genuine. This is one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colours which are made from actual authentic earth minerals. So that looks rather gorgeous doesn't it? Carmine is very luscious as well, isn't it? A luscious ruby red. If you're a student of watercolour and you've been using student grade paints to now and you get these dot cards, you will soon see that these are a completely different animal to student watercolours. The student watercolour ranges are Cotman by Winsor & Newton and Georgian by De La Rowney. And you'll know that you've got to scrub quite hard to get any pigment uh, off, a off a pan if you're using the little pans, the little squares. And you'll find that they move less readily than the two paints when you get them, when you start mixing with them. So you can get a 66 set of these, you don't have to get the 238. They offer these sheets in smaller denominations, so you can just try out some at a low cost and you will see what real watercolour is. It's a completely different animal to the, the other watercolours. And of course if you've been using hobby craft paints from say Hobby Lobby or um, in, the, in the USA or from the works, if you've been using hobby craft paints there, you'll soon see that this, re this is real watercolour. This is what watercolour is all about. And if you never try them and only use the hobby craft one or the student one, you're not going to know what you're missing and you, and you might really be put off watercolour because you'll think, oh, well, this is a bit awful. These paints aren't really vibrant. They're just sitting there inert on the paper, whereas they're not inert at all. The fact is you're not painting with watercolour, are you? You're painting with student grade or even worse, hobby craft grade, which is just full of chalk, cheaper pigments and all those other negatives. I'm finding this very therapeutic, I don't know about you, because as I as I look out at the colours, look at that, I mean my goodness, they're just like dual colours, they really are dual tones, aren't they? It's going to be hard culling this, uh, my selection down for this course. I've got a limit really in that I'm painting autumnal leaves and pods and seeds so I've got some sort of parameters but uh, I would like to have every single one. So that was Quinacridone Rose, now this is Quinacridone Lilac. I bet that would be a fabulous colour for painting say uh, Clematis, you know. I'll just show you in, in a different light as well if I tip it to the light source you can see how they come alive. I mean, these are just a thing of beauty themselves. You know, I could put this in a frame, couldn't I? So I'm going to leave you now while I carry on and hope that you've enjoyed this and you might try and just get a single sheet. Links to these are in the description below um, as well and in, in the text so you can find more details about where to get them. So I finished painting page one 
and what an exquisite collection there is. From yellow to orange to scarlet to red to ruby and then moving into violet. So now I'm going to look at page two, which is more the, the violets coming into the blues and the turquoises moving into the greens and the very dark greens. So let's stay on camera and show you some of these. Let's do this first group of six, uh, nine here. So Imperial Purple, I've been intrigued to see uh, what this colour's like because it sounds fabulous, doesn't it? With a name like Imperial Purple. And that is a very elegant and strong purple. Now next is Quinacridone Purple. This has a more red hue to it than the one above. The one above I'd say is more of a... Um, a, a genuine purple. I'm just going to alter my my light. Let's see, that's too dark. Okay, bear with me a second. There, I think that's a bit better. So let's move on now to ultramarine violet. This is a very calming, soothing colour, for me anyway. It's violet and it's going towards the blue. Hence the ultramarine in there. I'll move down actually onto Amethyst Genuine. Now this is a Prima Tech colour, so it's going to take a bit more dissolving yes because it's a natural mineral color so it doesn't dissolve as readily as the extra fine watercolors that Daniel Smith has got on this dot card so just to let you know that but it leaves a very wabi-sabi subtle and atmospheric color now Carbazole Violet, I've never seen or heard of that colour before, so let's zoom in on that. Carbazole Violet, oh yes that's very reactive isn't it, you see, paints are like people, they react differently, some are inert, some are volatile, some are dominant, some are submissive, and that is a very strong purple, in fact. You know, I think I prefer it for strength to the Imperial Purple. Different qualities. Now Wisteria. I've had my eye on Wisteria for a long time. This is a relatively new paint by Daniel Smith. Oh, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's slightly opaque. Look at that. That is a gorgeous... Oh, you could paint an English country garden with wisteria in with that paint, that's for sure. I love that. Very subtle violet. Now, cobalt blue violet. Yes, yeah, so this is more bluey violet than a purpley violet. And moon glow. This is a very atmospheric colour. I've got a tube of this already actually and I do like it. It's very good for evening, see, dusk paintings, paintings which are quite moody and low key. Then shadow violet. This seems more like a grey to be honest. There's just a, a, a hint a very small hint of violety uh, purple in there is not very evident <coughs> but again these paints need to be looked at again when they're totally dry because every paint dries to a slightly different character now this is Suji Light Genuine and this is a Prima Tech colour so this is actually a natural authentic pigment a mineral and I can see the pearlescence in it I don't know if you can see it on camera. 
it's very pearly. Yeah, that's got definite tiny grains of sparkle in that. I'm not a fan of sparkle in my watercolours. I just don't like it. But if you like that sort of thing, then that's a beautiful paint. So once more, I'm going to go off camera now while I test out all the others and I'll report back to you. Hi, I've just done the purple and blue and green card. This is page number two in the Daniel Smith watercolour dot papers to try. And again, I'm just blown away by these colours if I just tilt them towards the light for you to see. Most of them I did before lunch and they've had chance to dry to their actual authentic colours and some of them are just done now and they're still a bit damp so they're a bit darker than what they'll eventually be. But again I'm spoilt for choice of these colours to pick from. It really is a help to see them painted out like this so that when I go to select my colours I can see definitely, oh you know, this purple is a definitely different type purple to that one and so on. Um, you know, this green is a cooler green than, say, this one. And so it helps to judge when you're picking colours. So I'd really recommend getting these. And you can see them on the wall and you've got them uh, for, as a record forever to see. And they also inspire. So, on to the next sheet. Right, I've done the first row, all but one. So I'll just zoom into the raw sienna. I'll show you that one coming alive with a touch of water. I'm trying to paint it at full strength so that when it dries in this rectangle I get a really good idea of the colour. Okay, so if I just zoom out and show you these. Again, a fabulous collection, selection. Let's zoom in a little bit. I, I liked, particularly like the green gold, uh, that came readily to the brush, as did the olive green. Um, the Verona gold ochre and the French ochre and the bronzite genuine, I had to work quite hard to get the paint to dissolve. So I don't know if it was maybe a batch that had some sort of, uh, you know, it had sealed a bit hard or something. But, you know, trying them out, Again, shows you the character of the paints. Some paints moisten readily because of the pigment that's in them. Every pigment is different. And some of them are, are more, you know, difficult to get moistened and to get going. So let's do a few while we're on camera. I'm going to move up now to the burgundy yellow ochre. This is quite a subtle pale sand colour. I'm making sure I really activate that dot to give the paint a good chance to show its true colours. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? Now let's move on to yellow ochre. Ah, so this has a slightly more orangey colour to it than the one above. That's definitely, I'd say, tan, a light tan. Now this is a bit more slightly, slightly only to the terracotta, it's got slightly orange hue and it's only by painting these swatches that you can compare them side by side and see, how, see what they're doing. So Mars Yellow, that's an interesting name isn't it? This comes readily off the dot and dissolves, it's quite semi-opaque, you see that little symbol there with a the circle, half white, half black? Yes, and it feels opaque, it looks opaque, it's covering the paper quite richly. It's a lovely deep tan, sort of maybe butterscotch, that butterscotch sort of colour. Now, this is raw sienna itself, the other one was raw sienna light, sorry, the first one I, the first one I wet. This is raw sienna. And again, this would be beautiful if you're painting scenes from the south of France or Ital Italy or any Mediterranean scenes, perhaps. Beautiful for the stonework in those countries. That's a much deeper tan, isn't it, than the others. 
Now quinacridone gold, I'm expecting this to be very bright and it is. It's deceptive, the dot looks almost like dark brown but when you get the moisture on there, boy it lightens up, it's like a glorious sun gold, yellow and a tiny bit more water. Very vibrant. The quinacridones were actually made for the car industry and Daniel Smith have incorporated these pigments into their paints. A very, very rich tan, a vibrant tan, I'd say, um, transparent. Obviously with the zero, a uh, pale zero like that, uh, it means it's transparent. So if you like glazing your paints, that's a good one to have. Transparent again, yellow oxide. You can see the subtle differences, can't you, between them all. Mount Amiata, Nitrate Sienna, that's a mouthful, isn't it? This is a transparent light earth tone again. And just rubbing my brush really well over it to activate the pigment thoroughly. Give myself a good idea of what this paint is like. So we've got lots of choice for butterscotch, tan, terracotta, burnt orange almost. Now this is hematite, burnt scarlet genuine. This is a Primatec colour, so this is actually the authentic natural pigment of hematite. Hematite, which is iron, isn't it? So that's a rich chocolatey brown. Now this is EF, yellow iron oxide. It's a strange name. This is semi-opaque as well as the one above. And again, this is a bit more of an orangey brown. I'd say that's dark chocolate. This is milk chocolate. We've got lots of browns to get through, so we'll have lots of choice. Now, go it tight. Sorry. Go it tight brown ochre. This is quite a pale brown. I'm, I'm really working the dot and it's not as rich as the other two, even though it is an opaque, uh, semi-opaque colour. So again, some colours are more strident and essentially dark than others. I'm going to do two more, then I'm going to go off camera, otherwise this video will be too long to upload. This is a beautiful colour, quinacridone deep gold. My goodness me, look at that. That is something else, isn't it? That's exploding onto the paper in a rich, a reddish gold. Very exotic, elegant looking colour there. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on and I'll come back to you when I've done some more dots. Back on to the screen now with some more of these earth tones from Daniel Smith. I, I'm finding that I'm not really fussed on the Puritec, sorry, Primatec colours. These are the ones that are made from authentic earth minerals. This is a personal choice. I just find that they are overall a bit too uh, difficult to get going. You know, they take quite a while to dissolve. And overall, their qualities are quite wabi-sabi, quite muted, very subtle. Um, and, and they might be suitable for a different palette, at a different purpose. But my, my way of painting and my sort of subject matter, I'm not fussed on them myself. But as I say, we're all different and people like to use these Primatec colours because they gr tend to granulate very well which means that the, the, the pigment settles in the little chinks in the paper, especially if you're using cold pressed paper or rough paper and you get a sedimenting effect and it looks very organic. 
so so there's that about them and they are they are lovely colors but i don't like how they handle i think that's the best way to describe it i'm not fussy on how they handle i prefer the more um explosive and possibly um explosive and more readily wettable paints so let's do some more I particularly like that quinacridone sienna that that jumped onto my brush when I when I activated it. Oh, and permanent brown, that's a surprise, isn't it? It's a reddish brown. Very uh, vibrant, very rich. I'd say that's a conquer brown, would you? Mahogany conquer brown. There's a bit of orange in that, isn't there? That's a beautiful color. So each time I'm rinsing my brush in one pot, then I'm dipping it in a clear pot. So I'm having clear water each time. Raw umber violet now. I'm going back and forth to activate that dot really well. This is semi-opaque, so it's got a good coverage. It's covering the paper there quite well. That's a very rich brown, a reddish brown, a purpley brown actually, I'd say there. Purpley brown. Transparent brown oxide. Now this is a fast mover and it's jumping onto my brush as soon as I activate that. That's transparent obviously. So transparent red oxide. When we say transparent it means that if you paint a wash of this then let it dry and then paint a wash of another transparent colour, the previous wash will show through, the previous colour will show through and it gives a very um, luminous effect in your painting. And if you like glazing in watercolour and adding various layers one after the other once the previous layer has dried, then transparent colours really are for you they give beautiful colour effects. Luminous is the word I'm looking for. They give a luminous effect because they're transparent. The light, the lumens can get through and hit the white of the paper and then bounce back out. Okay, so now we've got burnt sienna light. This is beautifully transparent as well. The paper that these dots are on is obviously a very good quality paper, I would think. I'm assuming it's watercolour paper, I should check that. Right, this is semi-opaque, this iron oxide, and this has given us a lovely rich, sort of a, a brick red, almost, colour. Now, burnt sienna. <coughs> burnt sienna, one of the most popular colours that you'll find on every artist's kit, burnt sienna. It's a good all-rounder. Rich, a rich conquer brown again. Um, maybe more of a chestnut chestnut colour. I'm thinking of a chestnut horse, you know. Then English red ochre. This could be good for the clay if you're pl painting ploughed fields, a British scene or, or anywhere that's got this type of soil in the world. Um, yeah, this looks like the colour of ploughed fields. Sorry that was off screen a bit. And the last one on this sheet is burnt umber. <clears throat> Again, a very popular colour found in every watercolour starter kit. And that's a mid earth brown, that's a good earth colour, a good soil colour. So there we are, let me zoom out. A breathtaking, aren't they? So I'm going to have to whittle the colours down and pick which ones I'm going to select because I'm going to fill a palette full of colours for my new course which is starting on the 1st of September on Teachable and the course is going to be called Fan in the Flames of Fall 
and it's for complete beginners and we'll be painting fall colours for leaves and berries and pods and seeds etc. So let's have a look at the last sheet and see what that gives us. Half of page four, which is the last page in this 238 colour set, there's four sheets all together of the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolours. Half of this sheet are actually pearlescent paints. I'm not going to test these out today, I'm going to leave that for another day because I don't like to use pearlescent paints in my watercolours. For me it's almost like painting acrylic on a piece of wild silk, it's just doesn't go together for me. That's my personal choice. Everyone's got their own opinion on, on that. So I'm going to carry on with just the, the normal colours and see what they give me. Well, this is a beautiful brown iron oxide and again, a neutral chocolate brown colour. It's not got any red in it and I can't see any uh, yellow in it either. It's a quite neutral colour. I'm going to zoom in. Raw umber. So this is a dark, slightly, slightly sort of greened brown, I'd say. Very useful colour raw umber for using in earth tones and sepia. Supposedly what's squirted out by the cuttlefish when any predator gets too close. And sepia ink is used a lot, isn't it, in drawing. The old masters used sepia. That's such a rich, dark brown-black. We're heading towards black now as we work through these colour sheets. Now this is a Prima Tech colour again and as you can see you know, it takes quite a lot of time to soak uh, to soak in the water and to dissolve and activate compared to the one above. You know, I've rubbed it back and forth quite a lot and it's still quite pale. This is called Sicklerite, Sicklerite Genuine. So what you're going to end up with are sort of paler, more muted colours, more subtle colours. And again, not every painting has to be vibrant and full on or even gaudy. It's up to you what look you want and if you want a very natural, organic, granulated look using these natural mineral pigments, then the Prima Tech could be for you. They're not for me, but it's great because I can try, I've can. i tried them out and now I know because I have been fancying them to be honest and thinking, oh I bet they're gorgeous, but they're just not doing it for me, for my, my personality. I just had have something else in mind something more vibrant and generally brighter hues. Van Dyke Brown, now that's an absolutely luscious brown black. Bloodstone Genuine, now this has a tiny bit of uh, purple in the black there. Like a shadow colour you might put on, uh, aubergine, a dark aubergine. That's a beautiful dark there. When they dry again they look slightly different so I'll come back to these when they are dry. So Luna Violet. Oops I've painted over the name there. That's a lovely, uh, so quite a, um, a misty grey, misty grey black with a bit of um, violet in it. Now neutral tint looks to me like it's got a bit more blue in it. That's a very rich, dark, neutral tint. Graphite grey. Now that would be beautiful in a cloudy, stormy sky. I can just picture that mixed in with some French ultramarine blue. That's a beautiful grey. I do like that. It's totally opaque, by the way, that one. Then Payne's blue grey obviously, there is a bit of blue in there, I can see that blue hue showing through. That's Payne's blue grey. I'll come back and show you them when they've, when they've dried. Then Payne's grey. 
This definitely is a more neutral grey, it doesn't have as much blue as the one I just did. But again, semi-opaque so you get quite a lot of coverage with that. Now I never use black uh, in my watercolour paintings. This is lamp black. I don't like that. I, I don't think I'd use lamp black ever. I prefer to mix very strong dark using two very strong complementaries like a really dark red with a dark dark green and that gives me the enough of a black that I that I need. I don't like two blacks. But this, now I do like this black tourmaline genuine. This is one of the Prima Tech colours I'm actually liking. Again, see how we all respond to colours in a different way. And this is why doing these test sheets is, is a good idea. Now ivory black, I'm not really happy using this because I'm assuming it's made from some sort of bones, uh, dead animal bones. Um, I'm not sure, I'll double check because overall Daniel Smith paints are vegan. They don't use any animal products in it at all so don't take my word for it. I must go, I must search ivory black and see if there are what it's made of. Luna black. A very, very dark, dark, intense grey. And finally, colours I very, very rarely use are the whites. So there's a Chinese white. Um, I tend to be a purist watercolour artist, which means I use the white of the paper as my whites and or mask them out with masking fluid. I don't use opaque white, semi-opaque white like this. And finally, titanium white. And I can see already that the Chinese white has a slight yellow tinge to it, whereas the titanium white seems to be a brighter white overall. Isn't that strange? Mm, yeah. So you can see a slightly different type of white there. So that's where I'm going to stop today. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all these colours, thanks to Daniel Smith's dot testing cards. I really had a ball doing these. And there are some interesting darks there. I will be maybe considering one or two of them. But I feel that if you are spending a fortune on high quality watercolour paints, you want to be keeping all your colours as pure and as bright as possible. And the minute you start adding opaque earth or black tones to them you're wasting an awful lot of money because you're dulling your paints okay so i prefer to as i say mix complements uh, use a strong green with a red or a strong orange with a dark blue and you'll get the dark colors that you need so thanks for watching and see you in the next video